What's going on, Technology family, and welcome back to another episode of the Technology News Talk. As I said before last week, we're doing another ranking uh, this week, and we're going to be doing the rankings of the top comic book movies of 2022. We're going to be doing that. Um, we're going to give you news, uh, updates on the Nets World Cup location. We're going to give you what's streaming this week. And what went down in the People's Choice Awards, and then uh, and, and plenty of other news there as well. <clears throat> so, so without further ado, let's get started on what we're streaming under the, this week. So, first up, we have Too Hot to Handle season four, that's on Netflix. We have Contact. A South Korean series that's on on Hulu. We got Will Smith return after the whole Oscars uh, 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 Chris Rock uh, scandal, but but uh, he's back on the scene. And uh, his latest movie, uh, Expedition, is still in theaters, but now it is streaming on Apple TV Plus. So you guys uh, check out that movie. <clears throat> we got. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which is on on uh, on Netflix. We got Indian Menzel, Which Way to the Stage, um, original film live concert that's on uh, that Disney Plus. We got The Binge Two. It's a wonderful binge that's on uh, Hulu. We got something from Tiffany's that's on um, uh, on Prime Video. We got Southside Season 3 that's on uh, HBO Max. And last but not least, uh, Doom Patrol Season 4. I just uh, just finished watching the the first two episodes. uh, That's on uh, HBO Max as as well. So that's what's... um, uh, the show streaming uh, the, this week. So, what are y'all planning to watch uh, uh, this week? So, let, let me know. And, um, well, with that out of the way, so, the World Cup uh, uh, this year is almost ending. But, we got some news on where the FIFA World Cup 2026 is going to be located. And, and without further ado, it's going to be located at the Mercedes-Benz uh, Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, my goodness. So, hopefully I'll be planning to, uh, plan to go there when the World, when the World Cup happens in, um, in 2026. So, yeah. So, that's your latest news on where the World Cup is going to be. For the, uh, it's going to be in Atlanta for 2026. So, um, hope you all have plans to go to Atlanta. In 2026, because it's going to be packed, for sure. So, uh, yeah. So, wherever y'all hear tickets go on sale, by the time we get to um, the 2026, get your tickets. Because I know it's going to be hella expensive. So, yeah. Um, so, that's your um, sports news. And um, once we hear, because um, uh, they're currently in the Final Four right now. So, uh, so by the next episode... Um, we'll tell you like uh, or which country is uh, either either going to be the, the new or still, but we'll see uh, next week. Uh, no, no, who wins the uh, the 2022 World War Cup? But um, uh, moving on, um, we recently just had the uh, the 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 people uh, the People's Choice Awards. Uh, let me pull it up on my screen real quick. Here we go. So it was the 44th. Uh, People's Choice Awards, uh, and for the second time, it was hosted by uh, Keenan Top- uh, Thompson. Uh, of course, it was live on uh, NBC and the E Network uh, as well. Nominees spanned about forty categories in film, television, music, and pop culture. Nope, and this is us led the film and television categories respectively with six nominees nominations. Each while Bad Bunny led the music categories with seven. 
Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was the most award film uh, nominee, winning three awards overall, including the movie of the year, 2022. Stranger Things topped the television nominees, also earning three wins, including the show of the year, 2022. Taylor Swift was the most awarded nominee in the music categories, winning the awards of Best Female Album and Music Video of 2022. She won in the latest categories with Midnight's, that, that's her latest album, and the Anti-Hero, respectively. That's other, another um, album. Uh, so that was two albums that she won, respectively. Ryan Reynolds was honored with the People's Icon Award Lizzo received the People's Champion Award and also the Song of the Year 2022 with About Damn Time, while Shane Twin was presented the Music Icon of the Award. So, uh, that's your um, uh, headlines from the 48 uh, uh, People's Choice Awards. So, um, and uh, with that um, uh, out of the way, so... Let's get into some of the Main Street uh, Main Street news. So, first one on the head: Indiana Jones Five director slams trolling a holes for spreading fake rumors. Hmm. Let's see what Indy Wire has to say about this. One more time: No one is taking over or replacing Indy or donning his hat, nor he is being erased. Through some uh, constraints, Mego writes, and he never was not not in any cut or script, but trolls with trolls. That's how they get their clicks. He continued, and please don't insult me, pointing out how once in the wild a troll is right. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut now. Then all one has to do. Is look at a set photos and interviews, and you get enough info to make a wild guesses about a movie plot. Mango went on to explain that his main Griffith isn't with a false information, but with a controversial voice trying to imitate fans, outrage over something that is not even happening. The drift between trolling a a holes and everyone else is they are trying to make money off of your feelings and other films and cultural war politics, he wrote. They push controversial guesses as coming from sources to getting up clicks. Let it go. Now, we can all speculate to see, oh, after Indiana Jones 5, like, what's going to happen? But, but listen, we don't know what's going to happen. Like, we don't know what the higher-ups are thinking. After uh, Indiana Jones Five, all we can speculate. All all we know right now is there is going to be an Indiana Jones series coming up at Disney Plus. We haven't got a full um, plot details or any other information about that. That's the only thing we know right now. So I would say give it some time. Wait till um, Indiana Jones Five come out next year, and then we can start speculate. Oh, what's going to happen? Within the Indiana Jones series and other stuff, uh, could speculate some of that, but um, we won't know anything until what the higher ups is gonna do with that character. So, just take a chill pill and calm down, and just let's just focus on Indiana Jones five right now and just in anticipation, because um, we all know this is gonna be Harrison Ford's farewell and final bidding as Indiana Jones five. So. Let's just uh, enjoy the ride that he has given us with this character. So, that's all we uh, have to say about that. So, moving on. Disney could buy Netflix, suggested major news outlet. Hmm. Let's see what Hollywood Reporter has to say. Why it would make sense? Occurring Netflix will make Disney the undisputed leader in streaming, giving it access to a wider uh, breather of content and expanding its worldwide footprint. Disney has been growing 
its international expansion, while Netflix is already in more than 190 countries, Netflix stocks has dropped more than 55% in the past year, which may have given it a more in, in attractive price point. Plus, Netflix co-CEO Reed uh, Hastings recently signed his fortress to Iger, tweeting, I have been hoping Iger will run for president. He is amazing. So, I don't know. I mean, it could happen. But we'll just have to wait and see um, what's going to happen between now and the next few years. So, let's see what kind of deal they, uh, uh, they're going to make out of it. Moving on. Warner Brothers fits costly mistakes by returning HBO Max to Amazon Prime channels. So, that sounds like good news. Um, let's see what, what Variety has to say. HBO Max returns to Prime Video channels comes after the premier, the premium streamer under Warner Media dropped off Prime Video channels in September of 2021. After the media's company and Amazon failed to reach an agreement to extend the distributor prep pact. The sticky point, Warner Media, then owned by AT&T, wanted more control of the direct consumer relationships, indicating that the ability to collect data for target advertising more than Amazon was willing to, uh, to, to do. About 5 million HBO and HBO Max customers has subscribed through uh, 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 Prime Video channels. At the end of the deal, took a bite out of HBO Max's subscriber basis. So that sounds like good news that HBO Max is back at, as a uh, Prime Video channel, uh, Prime Video channels to to all the uh, Prime to, uh, to, to subscribers. So that that sounds like good news there. Moving on, Cheers and Star Trek star Kirstie Allen dies at 71. So, this is what Hollywood Reporter has to say. The Bow Alley collected eight Emmy no nomina nominations during her career. The first five for playing a bar manager, Rebecca Howe, on NBC's Cheers after effectively taking over the 19. 87 for Shirley Long, who has quit the Boston-based series. She won in 1991 and worked on the show through its 1993 conclusion. She played an accountant, Molly Jensen, a single mother who had a baby, whose thoughts were voiced by Bruce Willis, outside of John Travolta, in the hit comedy Luke Who's Talking in 1989. Directed by Amy Hatchworth. Then returned for the sequels in 1990 and 1993. The Green Eye Hussey voice Allen led a second nominee, a second, second Emmy in 1994 for her turn as a woman who insists on carrying her autistic son alone in the telefilm David's Mother, and she was nominated again in 19, 1975 for her performance. In the Mar Mario Puzzle miniseries, The Last Don. So, yeah. Um, that's what I uh, mostly know Chrissy Allen for in the um, Luke Who's Talking uh, uh, series. But um, but other than that, that was the uh, not the only death um, that happened uh, uh, the, this past week. Um, you guys might have known um, uh, Clarence uh, Gilliard. Who was in the uh, with uh, who was with uh, Ch Chuck Norris in Walker Texas Ranger, and who was also um, one of the terrorist group in the uh, in the first Die Hard movie. So yeah, he also passed um, that this week. So um, two great um, actor actresses uh, passed this week. So um, man, that's crazy. Moving on, the Flash movie. Moves up its release date and will now go up against a Pixar's Etimento. So, 
that's going to be very interesting. And um, this is what IndieWire has to say. Deadline has reported that the re response to the early test screenings for The Flash has been overwhelmingly positive, with one anonymous source saying that the film is as good as Disney and Marvel and Sony's Spider-Man No Way Home. The film reportedly uh, features nostalgia in Revolti cameos from Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck that have played extremely well with fans. The strong response has caused Warner Brothers to move the film 2023 release date up by a week. The film was originally scheduled to open up in theaters on June 23, 2023 but will now open on June 16th. That slot positions the film to compete for a large portion of the Father's Day weekend box office with, Pit with Pixar's uh, Emerald and Sony's Jennifer Lawrence comedy, No Hard Feelings, as the, film only major, uh, as the film's only major competition. So, here's, our, uh, here's, uh, here's my take. So, we know you're gonna have a lot of kids going to um to watch uh, uh the Pixar's at, at Emerald, so that's his own thing. Now with um Jennifer Lawrence's new movie, so that's really the competition there. And um, do we really want to? Did we really want to say who's gonna win this one between that and the Flash? Like, come on now. So I expect the Flash gonna take number one, then Emerald gonna take number two, and then. No hard feelings in the third one. That's how I see the box office go in that weekend. So ain't no surprise there. So um, yeah, but um, that's good news that the Flash is moving up on one week up. So we don't have to wait too long. But it's still kind of long, but not too long. Well, so 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 yeah, that, that that's definitely uh, the good good news there. Moving on, the bad girl directors. To meet with new DC head James Gunn. Hmm. Let's see what Screen Rant has to say. Fallon and Abador was probably devastated by Batgirl's cancellation from Warner Brothers. But the partners are still open to complete another film for DC Studios under one condition. That the movie is actually released. Although their future with DC Studios is not set. They are also interested in reviving Batman Beyond and adapting the futuristic Dark Knight to be the big, uh, to the big screen. Developed by Bruce Timm, Paul Dini, and Al Berner for the Warner, Bro Warner Brothers Network in, in 1999, the animated series centered on uh, Terry McGriff, a teenager groomed by Bruce Wayne to replace him as a protector of Gotham. As Fallon and Amador are scheduled to meet with Gunn, with their eyes set on future DC projects, including Batman, Be uh, Batman Beyond, the directors could still contribute to the DC to the DCU. So, there's been a lot of changes um, going on in uh, in the DCU right now. So. Let's see um what else they have planned because um they want to follow the, 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 they 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 want to do like phrases well what, what Marvel was doing so let's see but um no what what um James Gunn and the other um CEO um I forgot his name but what what uh, let's see what uh, what else they got planned Netflix is Wednesday Becomes the third most watched e English series of all time. Huh. No surprise there. Let's see what Variety has to say. With a total of 752.5 hours viewed since its premiere on November 23rd. The series has already the number three most watched English language te te TV te title in Netflix history. Netflix calculated this list based on a uh, on the project's performance during the first 28 day, days of availability, meaning that Wednesday still has two more weeks to continue climbing the ranks. 
For comparison, the number one position belonged to Stranger Things Season 4, with 1.35 billion hours viewed in its first 28 days. And Monster Damon the Jeffrey Dime story follows with 856.2 million. A closer look revealed that Wednesday may well be on track to surprise both of them. Hmm. Let's see what how Wednesday does it in I mean two weeks. <clears throat> Planes, Trains, and Automobiles remake with Drew Barrymore and Cameron Diaz. Hmm. Looks like we get two two thirds of Charlie's Angels returns for, yeah, for a movie. Hmm. That sounds interesting. But uh, let's see what Indy Wire has to say. Drew Barrymore may re reunite with Cameron Diaz on screen. The day talk show host told her longtime friend and co-star Adam Sandler that they that she has been discussing a Planes, Trains, and Automobiles remake with Diaz, while Barrymore has her sights on playing a role of the overbearing salesman initiated by the late star J J John Candy. The Steve Martin, uh, Mercury executive character is still up for grass between Diaz and, and Sandler. Her and I did discuss remaking planes and trains and automobiles. And then I was like, well, you know, Adam and I talked about that. Barrymore recalled that telling Diaz during the Drew Barrymore show via Entertainment Weekly. Well, I also want to play uh, now John Candy. Hmm. Let's see um, what else uh, they could be planning with that. And hopefully we get some more news on that. Alita, Battle Angel sequel, is very possible, says Avatar producer. Hmm. I hope we get a sequel because uh, everyone loved that movie. And um, let's see what Joe Block had to say. All through. A leader battle angel grew more than 400 million worldwide. It didn't reach the blockbuster numbers the studio had hoped for. The film clearly set the stage for more, but the overall box office, mixed reviews, and Disney's acquisition of 20th Century Fox, which is now um, 20th Century Studios, seemed to cast doubt on the sequel to A Leader Battle Angel. A Leader Battle Angel has gathered a positive fan base who would love to see a, a sequel, and those involved with the production are eager to return. The latest member of the Alita team to stoke the sequel's fire is pr producer John Lambert. Deadline has caught up with Lambert on a red cup before Avatar The Way of Water and asked him if there was any other film that he is going to do, going to do aside from Avatar. Well, there is a little film called A Leader Battle Angel that we have loved to circle back and do a sequel to. Lambert said, he's been talking to uh, Robert Rodriguez about that and hopefully that comes to fruition. So, like I said, I hope they do a sequel to A, to a, to a Leader Battle Angel because that, that was freaking good. So, um, moving on. Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, Claims that Black Adam, while underperforming, was still profitable. Hmm. Let's see what Variety had to say. Black Adam was stale out less than 400 million globally. Sources at Warner Brothers dispute these numbers, saying the movie will break even at 400 million. In any case, Black Adam isn't a financial winner that DC had hoped for when the movie was greenlit in, in 2000. 2019. The may be only competent of uh, uh, profitability. There's also TV and pay one deals, but box office returns decade that those downstream terms, even with uh, pre premium video on demand sales, which it could bring an additional uh, 25 million to 35 million. Black Adam isn't looking like it's going to get out of the red. By the time it lands on, on HBO Max. So that was one of the uh, things. Uh, one of the changes that could happen uh, within DC. So um, 
And yeah, we'll get to more DC news in a second. But um, Midnight Mass uh, creator Mike Flanagan doing a Dark Tower series for Amazon. Y'all remember the movie that came out with Idris Elba and um and Matthew McConaughey? Yeah. But um, let's see what Variety has to say about this story. The Haunting of the Hill House and Mass and Midnight Mass creator Mike Flanagan and his producing partner Trevor Macy have required the rights to adapt Stephen King's The Dark Tower into a television series. Flanagan and Macy revealed that the news <clears throat> revealed the news Thursday in an interview with Deadline, which dove more than into a pair's recent decision to move their interesting pictures overall deal from, from Netflix to Amazon. Spreading over the deal with Amazon. We acquired the rights to the Dark Tower, which if you know anything about me, you know it has been my holy grail of a project for most of my life, Planning It said. We actually have those rights curved out of our Amazon deal. Which doesn't mean that they could could not or won't get behind it at some point. You know you don't know. But that's something we have been developing ourselves and recently passionate about finally getting it up uh, on his feet for at some point. So I'm very interested to see how they're going to do the uh, the Dark the Dark Tower series. So uh, and, and it definitely will probably get the, it will definitely get some numbers for, um, uh, for for Prime Video. So Prime Video has been doing good lately with all the shows that they be putting out this year. So um. Uh, this sounds like good news here. Moving on. DC looking at a full reboot after Wonder Woman's three cancellations. See, I told y'all there was going to be some uh, some changes to DC, and I knew they was going to reboot because, let's be honest, uh, as much as we love the... Uh, yeah, the the DC standing standing universe, and uh, and much of we want the the Snyderverse to come back, but it's just been a mess at the start. So it's time to like go back to the drawing board and fix everything up. So that's what uh, James uh, James Gunn is doing. But um, let's see, let's read what Hollywood reporter has to say about um what Wonder Woman three cancellation. <laughs> Part of the plan could entail a truly fresh start and having no baggage from any previous regimes as they said to be resetting of how the DC movies and show are made. That, however, does not take from account for the possible success movies such as Shazam, Fury of the Gods, which is coming out on March 17, 2023, on the Wissefer as a producer, and Blue Beetle, which is coming out on August 18, 2023, would they have planned for for uh, ahead without the actors inhibiting those characters and recasting them, even those movies prov provide to be the box office hits? Observers are convinced that the plans called for an in inter interconnection stories, universe, and their rubblings of the establishment of a creative brain trust. The brain trust may have been already rolled in some captivity as sources say that Saffron had in recent weeks been meeting with the writers at his Los Angeles home in an effort to hold the presentation, gathering feedbacks and ideas for, uh, for plans. So, <clears throat> so, I said before that I think Blue 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 I think Blue Beetle is the last um DC Extended Universe um project that's gonna coming out there. So I say after that movie, the whole DC universe is, is getting rebooted. So they're gonna keep um Matt Reeves Batman universe. They're gonna keep um Tom Phillips uh, Joker universe. They're gonna keep they're gonna keep that as far as the movie universe. But the whole DC Extended Universe is gonna be gone. So. I heard that Zachary Lamb, after um, Shazam Fury of the Gods, he said he's leaving. So, 
And I also heard that Jason Will Moore, after uh, Aquaman and the uh, the Lost Kingdom, so yeah, I think that uh, Aquaman is the last uh, DC Extended Universe because that one's coming out in December. I forgot that was coming out in December, but um, but yeah, um, Jason Will Moore after Aquaman two comes out, he said he was le well. He's not exactly entirely leaving, so they say um they want him to leave as Aquaman because they they think he fits more as Lobo, which is entirely good. I would love to see him to, to be Lobo because he definitely fits that character. So um Ben Affleck he Ben Affleck said he was not coming back as Batman, so they got rid of uh, Harry Cavill again, but like uh and I say, uh, why would you do that again? But listen, um, they are focused that they are knowing that Superman is the biggest um, uh, prodigy when it comes to DC. So I hope they keep Henry Cavill. You are not going to find anyone else that can play Superman other than Henry Cavill. I'm sorry. That is not going to happen. So, But let's see... Um, what else they got planned? But uh, moving on. James Cameron says Marvel's Thanos visual effects does not come close to Avatar's Navi visual effects. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Variety has to say. <clears throat> Reporter Brandon Davis asked Cameron if at any of the visual effects breakthroughs coming out of Marvel movies and the comic book movie world has motivated him to raise the bar <clears throat> to which the filmmaker uh, responded obviously the big comic book movies films has been driving the share volume of the industry the rising tile of the t technology uh, rises everybody together it gives you higher quality artists more tools and plug-in codes to use you have gotten more talented people writing codes out there so it improves everything that said weta effects as it now called now is the best right intro light and magic does great work but when it comes to the kind of interracial facial stuff that we are doing Thanos, come on give me a break you saw avatar the way of water it's not even close it's what W-E-T-A never did. So we got some we probably got some competition there. So and a lot of different opinions. So I mean it is what it is. But uh moving on. Michael Keaton's Batman movie, possibly beyond, cancel says the report. Come on, Jesus Christ. Um let's see what Screen Rant has to say. It appears that Keenan could have receive his own Batman movie again as a spinoff uh, for for The Flash. As reported by the Hot Mike podcast, uh, Jeffrey Snyder, The Flash subscri subscriber Christian Hawson had apparently been working on a new Batman film centered around Michael Keaton's take on The Dark Knight. The project would have served as a reboot and continuing to exploring the Captain Crusader at the events of the Flash. It is unclear how far they got it in the process of developing it. But according to the host, the film has now been canceled. The rap has also followed up on the report claiming it was a Batman Beyond movie that King was set to headline. No one from DC Studios and Warner Brothers Discovery has commented on these reports. So, wow, this is crazy, man. And this, uh, uh, the, if you thought that was crazy, listen to this one. Reports that Patty Jenkins left Wonder Woman 3 has been told to change the story. And this is what Hollywood Report has to say. According to those in the know, it was Patty Jenkins who walked away after receiving notes on the treatment that she had submitted to the studio. Apparently, her three-quarter pitch had character arch problems and that rivaled those from... Uh, Wonder Woman 1984. We heard that Wonder Brothers mo motion picture chiefs Michael Diaz and Pam Andy had concerns about her, the treatment and before Sabra and Gunn weighed in. The group provided notes. Jiggy 
uh, Jenkins fought back and defended her vision that the Diego's uh, character art was solid. Jenkins was given the opportunity for another pass, but opted to walk out. Man, that don't sound good. Even though they want Gal Gadot to stay as well, Wonder Woman, but um, I'll say this: if they still want to do want to do Wonder Woman Wonder Woman three, I just say I just think Patty Jenkins would not would, is not going to be returning. So I don't know what's going on. So hopefully they got uh, we'll see in the next couple years. Um, uh, right after um, Aquaman and the uh, Aquaman two. To see uh, what's the what's going to be their new plan for for the DC extended uh, for, well we can't say DC extended universe no more it's just going to be uh, the the DC universe that's it that's the only way we we call it as but um but that's all the mainstream news so let's get into our rankings so we're going to be ranking the our 2022 couple of movies that came out this year so we had a total of Seven seven comic book movies that just came out this year. So let's get on to it. So at the bottom of the uh, of the bottom of the nine, uh, at number seven, we got more Morbius. Now, was it really a great movie? Absolutely not. You uh, you uh for all the comic book fans, you just came here to see how J- Jared Leto is going to be as Morbius, and you just want to see um where it lands in the um. In this Sony Spider-Man um, uh, Marvel, uh, Marvel Universe, you just want to see how it, uh, how it lands. And if you saw the um, the, the 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 end credits, you probably know that they were probably sending out the Sinister Six. So, yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, I got more Morbius at, at number seven. So coming in at number six is Thor: Love and Thunder. Now, it was okay for what it was. I mean, it was not great as um as as Thor Ragnarok. So, Tyrese, you was awesome at Ragnarok, but I think you fell off the fell off the cliff with uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. And uh, yeah, so it is what it is. So, coming in at number five, the DC Le- Legion of the Super Pets. So, this was really good, and um, so. I mean, what can I say? This was like a um, this is definitely a kids movie for for what it is, but I still enjoyed it, um, uh, for what it was. It was definitely uh, it was definitely good. So um, this is this is one of those type of movies that you have to watch with your um, with your pet, the way the guy, cause um, yeah, yeah, definitely a good movie. Um, no, coming in at number four is Black Adam. So uh, Black Adam was definitely good. Um, uh, for what it was, was it the greatest of all time. No, but um, but you're going definitely um uh, enjoy it. So, yeah. So that's that number four. Um, coming in at number three, um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, was it every thought that, that that I expected it to be? No, but it was definitely good at, at, uh, in the end. So, uh, that that's what I think it was. Uh, it's definitely uh, pretty good. So, um, uh, coming in at number two, Black Panther. Black Panther Wakanda Forever. So, was it good as the very first of Black Panther? No, but it was a. But like I said, it was a solid sequel, and um, and it definitely paid tribute to um, the to Jabber to, to Jabber Boseman there. So um, and 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 last but not least, coming in at number one, the Batman. What can I say? This was uh, absolutely awesome. Uh, Robert Pattinson did great. Um, this was a definitely a detective story. Um, so, so, so yeah, this was my, my, that was my number one. So, um, but yeah, uh, that's my, um, top, uh, uh, ranking for, um, for the 2022 comparable movies. So, um, I think next week, uh, we're going to, uh, 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 topple the top 10, uh, top 10 best, um, 2022 movies, uh, of this year. So, um, uh, well, I'm going to be talking about that. Uh, that's going to be my next rankings, uh, probably either next week or, or the following week. So, uh, but, so definitely, uh, that, uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, 
I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna do that on uh, because um I know we're, uh, our, our last show for this year is definitely gonna be before um before 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 Christmas week. So um I say so yeah it's, yeah yeah definitely next week definitely next week. So I uh, definitely next week is gonna be our last um our last show for 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 2022. So uh because um. Uh, before Christmas break, uh, we'll definitely be going out on break, and then after um, after New Year, uh, well, we will be back in January. Um, don't have a uh, a solid date yet, but um, but yeah, we will we'll be taking a break uh between uh Christmas and New Year's um in a weeks, but um, but yeah, I think next week is gonna be our our last show for 2022, and I think that's where we're gonna be doing our. Uh, the top ten best movies uh, of 2022 there. So um, yeah, be on the lookout for that. But um, uh, other than that, um, that's our show for the day. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell when new episode uploaded. Follow me there, and also post your comments. Uh, uh, what do you thought about this episode? And of course, if you're listening to me to on Anchor, Spotify, Google, Apple Podcasts. Uh, or any other podcast or streaming platforms, uh, don't forget to follow me there. But um, other than that, this is Trico, and I'm signing off. Peace.